Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope uh, each and every one of you guys are having a great Saturday. We'll be doing our live stream at 5 o'clock Eastern. And I wanted to share um, some of the Jason Garrett, Dak Prescott interview. Right now, if you're Dak Prescott, you're living your best life. You are everywhere. You are the toast of the town, as opposed to being the guy that's usually getting shit on, so to speak. And I'm really happy for Dak Prescott. I hope that when his career is done and over with, we'll be talking about him being a great person on and off the field, a great player, as well as a Super Bowl champion. Let's listen into a little bit of this because I'm really enjoying this. Okay, let's go back. We're at the Star, beautiful place. You first came to the Cowboys, it was Valley Ranch. Mm. Uh, your pre-draft visit, you made an incredible impression on so many people. What do you remember about that? And what do you remember about our first meeting? <laughs> ah, yeah, I remember you were tough. You were grilling me. Uh, you were grilling me on, on um, my, my adversity through the draft process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember just telling you over and over, you know, owning up on the mistake and just, you know, moving on and then getting on the, the, the chalkboard with you. And I remember drawing triple seam. And I remember <laughs> kept trying to draw it under the mic, over the mic. And I'm like, man, I know this is this is a triple seam. And you get up there, erase that, and draw it right through the linebacker. <laughs> and uh, it was a little bit of a reliever of a stress. Like, okay, maybe he's just he's making it tough on me. But... I was awesome. Think about that, what, eight years ago? Uh, gosh, gosh, thankful to be where I am now. Yeah. That was awesome. Lots happened since then. Very much so. Um, I remember the rookie mini camp going out there, and there was a question about you having played in the gun in college and playing mm -hmm. under center. And uh, I can remember the overwhelming impression is how coachable you were. You listened to it, you got it right, and you moved on. Uh, where'd that come from? Yeah, you know, if some, that's always something I've tried to take pride in um, is being coachable. And yeah, I remember that very, very vividly. And <laughs> that first step, digging, getting out from, from under center, it's almost a run back, but keeping your shoulders forward. Uh, to watching the tape of, of you, Troy, and the, and the guys uh, it, it, back in the day throwing and, and doing it from under center. So something I've always take pride in. I think really it stems from being a younger brother of three boys and really following those guys, watching those dudes do, do everything and trying to mimic their actions that if I could master that and pick up on what they did and, and learn those things that way, then I, I could do a lot of things. How has it served you since then, eight years later, yeah. if you have that mentality of being coachable and always getting better? I think for one, just being open, um, always being open to change, enjoying change, uh, embracing it, um, having different, I guess you could say systems, terminology, whatever it may have been through this whole process and journey of eight years of uh, really taking it in and embracing it and not, not being closed minded about it. More importantly, saying, give me more uh, to show me, show me why that's been successful. OK, I get it there. I'm going to work on it and practice it. And uh, I think this year is a great example of that, of the footwork change to mm -hmm. change footworks and, and the drop from under center in the gun in, in year eight and uh, really enjoy it enjoy it and, and watch this watch it be it paying off and having success from it has been fun yeah it's been great it's been fun to watch one of my great memories of you is late august we go up to seattle in 2016 third preseason game tony romo gets hurt on the third play and you go in there it was a third and eight and it was still the legion of boom back then yeah and you look left, you kind of came back, you found Beasley, 12 yard completion, we're on our way. We all looked at each other on the sidelines like, I think we got something here. Yeah. And talk about the mentality to be able to go do that and embrace that opportunity. Steamer option H angle. <laughs> there uh, you go. Yeah, just always preparing yourself to be ready. Uh, I always said, unfortunately, but fortunately for me, I got the starting position in all three levels, high school, college, and pro, from the guy going down in front of me and being able to come in and, and be prepared and ready for my job and for that uh, that opportunity. So uh, always preparing to be the number one. It's a cliche thing that, that you tell guys, you tell guys to prepare and to always take those mental reps, but they were so huge to me throughout my life that it was it served me no different as when I got into the, the NFL, young rookie, right? For, fourth rounder, you guys <laughs> drafted me, grilling me on just getting out from under center on triple seam and, you know, so but I'm gonna prepare and study for this thing in case that opportunity comes and always holding myself to that standard, to that to that number one quarterback standard and um, 
yeah, it it fortunately paid off, you know, not 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 having to look back and taking advantage of that opportunity and here we are eight years later and no plans ever giving this yeah, up until, exactly until right. I'm ready to. Exactly right. You know, you go on and win 13 games as a rookie, 13 and three. And, and one of my big takeaways from that was how comfortable you were as a leader and how somehow you rallied everybody around you, veteran mm -hmm. players who played in the NFL yeah. for a long time. And it just seemed like you developed these relationships and these guys wanted to play for you. Where does that come from? I think it, uh, for one, you've always said, you know, you, you, win with, you win with good people, right? Woody Hayes. Amen uh, on that one. So from there, uh, one, just being myself. And, you know, really going back to my rookie year, I credit those vets. I credit Sean Lee, uh, Jason Witten, Tyrone Crawford. Those guys are really, Zach Martin, Tyron, of really pushing me forward, saying, no, no, go, go, go be that guy. Don't, don't, don't contain yourself. Don't contain what, that, that, what, that, that um leader in you don't 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 you know what i'm saying subside that because of who we are go go get out in front and go do that use your energy use your passion for mm -hmm. the game and i think your power that's what good. it comes from always have put into relationships you know nobody cares what you know until they know how much you care and i care about my teammates you know well beyond the the numbers on their jerseys or that football field and so it's about growing those relationships in the locker room that when we get into crucial moments or crunch time they know i care for them and vice versa and that trust is built that no matter what is what is asked for That's me to do them right or there, for yes. i need to do for them that it's going to get going to get done because it's for a better purpose and for the bigger purpose and, and for the common goal yeah one of my memories was you know we'd be up meeting Get game planning on a Wednesday or Thursday, and there'd be racket coming mm. from the from the locker room. Six, yeah. seven o'clock at night, well after practice was over, we'd go down there, and you guys were playing hamper basketball with that oh, yeah. giant tennis ball, right? Still goes on. You still playing? It, oh yeah, still goes on. <laughs> Good. Why is that important? Just the camaraderie, uh, the camaraderie, the brotherhood. There, there's nothing more special than, than the locker room. Being able to, to sit next to, uh, obviously I'm by C.D. Lamb, but to sit next to a young guy and have a D lineman be beside him, you know, in the locker room positions, numbers, race, color, offense, defense, none of that matters. It, it's just about all these men being on the same page for one common goal. And uh, the, the, the more you can protect that locker room, more you can have fun in that locker room, be open in that locker room. It only makes being on the football field better. Let's talk about being the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. How about Cowboys. that one? Troy Aikman used to tell me, hey, there's a lot of great things yeah. about being the starting quarterback for the Cowboys, but there's a lot of stuff that comes with that dinner. Yeah. Talk yeah, about, right about that, that experience, the scrutiny you have, the high-profile nature of it, and, uh, and what you love most about it, and what are some of the things you'd probably rather not have to deal with? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's at the end of the day, I'm blessed. I'm blessed for this opportunity, this platform. Uh, just, just as Troy said, yeah, it's it's a nice steak dinner, but a lot of things come with it, <laughs> and a lot of things you know you you get blindsided by, and scrutiny's for one, um, and and that's okay. You know, I've always held myself to a high standard, so nobody's the biggest critic than than I am on my game. I know what the reads were. I know what I should have done, uh, and so when it doesn't match up to that, it's easy to block out. It's easy to say no, and if it does, yeah, I know, right. yeah, I know where I messed up, and so. Um, but the best part is really just being able to, to have such a reach, have such a reach to be able to inspire others, tell my story, um, to overcome adversity, to really just uh, give and serve uh, not only the community, not only Dallas, but this world, because that's what this, this platform allows me to do. Yeah. Well, man of the year last year, uh, fight, faith and finish. Um, incredible. You, you've done some amazing work. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just, just the foundation, the Faith Fight Finish Foundation, and us being able to, as I said, not only inspire youth, but to be able to raise money for cancer research and development, uh, to be able to bridge the gap between the law enforcement and the community they serve, uh, and then just mental, mental health and, and suicide prevention. Um, all three things that I've been affected by uh, throughout my life and uh, just understand that this world uh, needs help, needs help in all of that. And, you know, I actually have a fourth one is just serving families facing hardships because my adversity could be different than your adversity and I want to be mm -hmm. able to help you and that's my point about just wanting to serve wanting to serve others uh, this world is all about our relationships and talk about our relationships on the football field but it goes well beyond beyond this this, this football field and, and this building and uh, so I just want to be the best that I can I've been blessed in so many ways that in so I just want to help give yeah you're making the world a better place. Let's talk about this year. I saw you at the at the Rangers playoff game, and it was after the San Francisco game. You guys were on a bye, and maybe there was a little frustration at that time. And now six weeks later, you've never played better football. What's changed since then? Uh, 
after that San Fran game, uh, that, that one surprised me. You know, that, that one went into that game prepared, went that game ready. Uh, personally, thought the team did, thought we were ready to go. And uh, just to get punched in the mouth the way we did, it was a great wake up, humbling call for us and for this team and understanding, yeah, it, it, it's about our journey, but we've got to make sure we're crossing our T's, dotting our I's and doing every little mm -hmm. thing right when you when you play other, other great teams like that because they got the best of us that day. And, uh, we, we didn't fight the way that we should have through the end. And so I think, you know, that pissed everybody off, everybody in the building off. And so raised the focus up a little bit more, heightened the detail. And uh, I think as a few of us changed, you know, we went to this, to the game plan, changing how we want to attack guys and uh, being able to throw the ball more, spread teams out. Uh, you know, after the game, I realized I need to use my feet. I need to be more mobile. Maybe it's, you know, extending plays, allowing these guys to get open after the initial play. Uh, and a lot of good things have happened since then at this point. We're really just trying to build and, and put the best versions of ourselves out there each and every week, getting better. It, it feels like you are moving more by design, but also spontaneously, and also throwing the ball down the field a little bit yeah. more. Is that true? That, that's definitely true. I mean, going back to San Fran game and really before that, we, we, we want to be aggressive, and you've, you've got you've to take your shots, and I don't think we were doing that early enough. I mean, Coach McCarthy would be the first to say that, and so now it's about you give us one-on-one -on -one and you want to challenge us, we're, we're going to challenge you, see if you can keep up and you can mm. run with the guys that we have, and we're going to take the top off of it, and then from there, we'll open up other things and, and, and play the game that we want to. And so, uh, yeah, that's we, we've got to be aggressive and you're going to get our fastball, and that's taking the shot. That's awesome. I'm going to leave it right there. That is, you can watch the whole thing in its entirety. You know, for Jason Garrett, it has to be actually amazing to see the kid that he drafted that never, he probably never thought that he would ever even see the field. To see him outlive his career at the with the Dallas Cowboys and to see him being the player that he is and the leader that he is on the locker room and on the field um, as well as in the community actually has to be good I, I he, you probably would think and I, I don't know I don't know but if I'm Jason Garrett I would feel like I was a major part of Dak Prescott in his career being the guy who you know, being the coach that got him started and believed in him and worked with him. And to see him continue to grow, it should be a sense of pride. So there you have it, good people. Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm going to get back to work. And in about two and a half hours, we've got our live stream. So I hope to see you there at five. Peace out.